Greetings. My name is Tim Stark. I'm a professor of civil engineering at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. I'm recording various test methods used to assess the index and performance properties of geomembranes for containment applications. Today I'll cover the test procedure ASTM D882, standard test method for tensile properties of thin plastic sheeting. The test method covers the determination of tensile properties of plastics in the form of thin sheeting and films up to a thickness of one millimeter or 40 mil. This test method is applicable to all plastics within this thickness range, in other words, less than 40 mil or 1.0 millimeters. The importance of the test is the tensile properties determined by the test are of value for identifying and characterizing the materials for control and specification purposes. The tensile properties can vary with specimen thickness, method of preparation, speed of testing, type of grips used in the tensiometer, and manner of measuring extension. So the test is very test procedure specific, so you need to follow the ASTM test method as I'll illustrate today very carefully. The apparatus that I'll use today to measure the tensile properties of this 30 mil unreinforced PVC geomembrane, so it has a thickness that's less than one millimeter or 40 mil, is this tensiometer. The important features of this device are it applies a constant displacement rate. There are two grips, the one on the left will remain stationary during the test, and the one on the right is movable, and it will displace at a constant displacement rate uh, during this test, which I'll describe in just a minute. The test specimens are cut from the virgin geomembrane material. Five specimens are cut from the material and average to develop the tensile properties in one particular direction of the geomembrane. There are two directions when a geomembrane is manufactured, the machine direction, which I'm going to test today, and also the cross machine direction. So five specimens will also be obtained in the orientation in the cross machine direction. The specimens are one inch or 25 millimeters wide and six inches long. This will allow a grip separation of two inches and the easiest way to make sure that's consistent between specimens is make a mark on the geomembrane specimen and another mark that's 50 millimeters or two inches away and the rest of the material is placed inside the grip. The grip is brought to the edge of the line on each side, and then this side is placed in the movable grip up to the line shown there. The speed for the test is set in ASTM D882. It's a table that's included in the test method, table number one, and that's shown at the bottom of our data sheet. The displacement rate is a function of the percent elongation that will occur during the test. In this particular geomembrane, it's an unreinforced PVC geomembrane, so the elongation will be greater than 100%. So you'll go to the bottom of the table and over to the rate of grip separation. And here you can see that the rate is 500 millimeters per minute or 20 inches per minute. So the tensiometer is set at 500 millimeters per minute for this test. The test is ready to start now. The specimen has been clamped into the grip to the lines that were previously drawn and so the grip separation at the start of the test is 50 millimeters or two inches. 
As the test progresses, the tensiometer will read out the tensile force, and it will also read out the displacement that the two grips have been separated at that particular time. I will watch that through this test, and I will record the load at 100 percent, or 50 millimeters, so I can calculate the modulus, tensile modulus, of the geomembrane at 100 percent. The readings could be taken periodically throughout the test to develop a relationship between load and displacement that can be used also to calculate the modulus at other percent elongations. I will calculate it at 100 percent and at break. So the test is ready. I'll start the test. You can see the material elongating now. 32, 35, 40 millimeters of displacement, 50, and it is at 196 newtons. So I will use 196 newtons and 100 percent strain to calculate modulus in just a minute. You can see the geomembrane elongating and thinning as the movable grip is pulling away. Now the width of the specimen is less than 25 millimeters or one inch where it started. And eventually it will break right there. The final values for this particular test is a tensile force at break of 330 newtons and a displacement of 191 millimeters. I will use those values now on the data sheet to calculate the required parameters by the test. Here is the failed specimen. You can see it broke at the right grip right there, and the geomembrane elongated in between the grips. The other grip was in this area. So now it's time to do the calculations of the tensile properties of the geomembrane. So I will enter the values that we measured. So at 100 percent elongation, the load was 196 newtons. The loaded break is 330 newtons, and the level of displacement at break is 191 millimeters. Now, I'm going to calculate the tensile break strength, the elongation at break, the secant modulus at 100 percent elongation, and the secant modulus at break. The first calculation is tensile break strength. So strength, so the load at break is 330 divided by the initial width. The initial specimen dimensions are in the upper right corner of the data sheet. And the initial width is 25.4 millimeters. The initial thickness is 0 0.76 millimeters, and I have to multiply by 1,000 to get to kPa. And if you make that calculation, the tensile break strength is 17,095 kilonewtons per meter squared, or kPa. So that value is entered here, 0, 0,95. The next calculation is the elongation at break, which is the change in length over the initial length. And so the change in length is 191 millimeters divided by L0, which is 50 millimeters or 2 inches, which is the grip separation. So I'll enter that in millimeters, and that calculation times 100 gives a percent elongation of 376 
which is entered under elongation at break. Next is the calculation of the secant modulus at 100 percent. That is using the tensile force at 100 percent and that was measured during the test to be 196 newtons divided by W0, which is the initial width, 25.4 millimeters, times the initial thickness of 0 0.76 millimeters. Again, I have to multiply by 1,000 to get millimeters into meters, and that gives 10,153 kilonewtons per meter squared or kPa. So that is 10,153 entered for the secant modulus at 100 percent. The last calculation is the secant modulus at break. So the load, tensile load at break is 330 Newtons. I'll also multiply by a thousand again to convert one of the millimeter lengths to meters. The width of the specimen, 25.4 times the initial thickness is 0 0.76. And then I have to divide by the elongation ratio at break, which is delta L, 191 millimeters, divided by the initial length, which is the separation of the grips, 50.8 millimeters. And that gives a secant modulus at break of 4,559 kilonewtons per meter squared or KPA. So I enter on the data sheet 4559. So you can see the modulus at break is more than 50 percent lower than the modulus at 100 percent elongation. Those are the calculations for the tensile properties of thin plastic sheeting according to ASTM D882. And there's the completed data sheet. Four more specimens in the machine direction would be tested, and the averages of those five reported for the machine direction, and then five specimens in the cross machine direction averaged. That covers the testing of the tensile properties of thin sheeting according to ASTM D882. If you have any questions, please contact me at the fabricated geomembrane at gmail.com or visit our website at www.fabricatedgeomembrane.com.